can't afford therapy so listen this is part one of a series called mommy issues so follow me because it's going to be a long one and if i hear anyone saying i'm copying risatisa tokosana <laughs> so my name is abby or mama aria I'm 25 years old. I was born in 18th February 1999, which makes me a Gen Z parent here. Yeah? My baby girl is 6 years old and I homeschool her for reasons you're going to learn later, okay? What do I do for work? I'll tell you that later as well, but I recently started a business as a florist and since you're here, this is my business page, so please go and follow me. A disclaimer, the series is called Mommy Issues because it's about my own journey into motherhood, the circumstances that led into it and my experiences so far. The prevalent themes in my story are going to be the neglect of paternal responsibilities, single motherhood, navigating life as a young mom, mental health issues, and childhood trauma in general. Now my story is not meant to criticize my parents. It's just to show you how fast bad decisions can escalate and potentially create generational trauma, you know. I was born and raised in Lamu in the coast and my parents got married very young. My mother was 19, my father was 29. So they met, fell in love and had a huge church wedding. Afterwards I was born and then 5 years later my brother was born. So when my brother was barely 6 months old, my father just packed up his shit and left. He went back to his mother's house in Muranga. Okay? can't afford therapy so listen this is part two of mommy issues now after my father left my mother was heartbroken and rightfully so because she was 25 26 left with two children remember at that time my brother was still very young but one thing my mother did was hate her life which makes sense but honestly to what extent because this is what happened yeah it felt like she regretted having kids because she would always complain about how life difficult is and that raising two kids on your own is a challenge which we understand you know but like they are your kids you know what i mean now what happened is that growing up my mother took out her frustrations on me and my brother you know what i mean yeah But before we go there, I want you to understand that her circumstances were also not very conducive because she had a business in the market, yeah. She would sell the fruits and vegetables and stuff like that, and that's what she did all through us growing up. And since she couldn't handle raising two kids by herself, me and my brother went to live with my grandmother and grandfather. Those are her parents, her mom and dad, okay? But staying at my shoshos wasn't permanent. We used to go back and forth. So when I was in class 7 I came to live with my mother. Her house was near school so it was only convenient considering class 7 class 8 KCP is coming up so I need to focus in school yeah. So to reduce the distance I went to live with my mother. Where? What I remember about my childhood is that I was forced to mature very young because you see the house chores need to be done but my mom spends the whole day at work yeah so the schedule was pretty much wake up in the morning go to school i was in a day school so we went back home for lunch in the evening i come home from school i go to her workplace grab whatever we are going to make for dinner i go home and prepare dinner because who's going to do it now one thing about her it's like she always took out her frustrations on us mostly me cuz like i was the first born so whenever i misbehaved failed to do my chores on time i would get a huge beating which i don't know it makes sense you have to discipline your kids but honestly it what ends cuz at some point it felt like she was hitting you to kill you you know <laughs> but something happened that made me question the whole arrangement of having me take care of household chores so she would come home at 7 and apata ndio sasa hiyo niko harakati za kuosha vyombo mbiombio so she asks me you left school at 4 pm it's 7 pm why are you still doing the dishes what am i supposed to say but i've been outside playing but i'm 9 years old 10 years old unataka niseme aje na nimekuwa tu nikicheza you know the answer so just beat me up to malizane story so that went on for a while and then for some reason my grades in school started dropping it was alarming yeah so she went to the head teacher and started telling him about how she doesn't understand why it's happening because even at home she's tried reducing the workload for me but i still go outside and play all day 
So the two of them hatched a plan to punish me, okay? So they decided that when it's lunch time, I was going to go to her workplace. I get greens or whatever it is I'm supposed to cook for lunch. Go home, cook lunch for myself. Mind you, I'm, I was old, how old was I? Was I 10 or 11? Cook lunch for myself, then eat and go back to school. Nasayo, you know, there's obviously a lunchtime period, yeah? So I'm not supposed to get late going back to school. So that was like a way of teaching me time management, you know, tough love kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to talk about it much because it didn't work. Because even today, I'm a huge procrastinator. But anyway, can't afford therapy, so listen. This is part three of Mommy Issues. You're probably wondering where my father was this whole time, yeah? He was still at Moranga. I'm going to talk about his side of the family in later parts, okay? Now, here's the thing. I can't speak to the nature of their relationship at that time. But all I remember is that every time I needed something, either for school or whatever, my mother would give me the phone and tell me to call my father so he can send money to buy or pay for that particular thing. Which now looking back, I don't even know what to say because I can't imagine handing the phone to my child to tell her to tell the father to do stuff. Do you know what that does to a child? I'm sure that's something most single moms do. But now since I experienced it as a child, I would never do that to my kid. I don't know, sometimes he sent, sometimes he didn't send. I don't know, and they'd argue or whatever. I don't know. I was young. I don't really remember much, yeah? But one particular instance that I will never forget is when the time came to register for the KCP exam. At that time, we paid 500 shillings. I don't know whether it, it's different now. Okay, it's different because KCP is no more. I remember very well, my mother said she doesn't have that amount, obviously. You see, nowadays you talk about, like, avoiding such kind of statements of I'm broke, I don't have... I know sometimes we do that, but it gets to a point when it's too much, such that I feel the universe cannot bless you if you keep being such a pessimist. I feel like having an abundance mindset is very important, yeah? So the head teacher was wondering, the time is nearing for the registration deadline and I still haven't paid. What I remember very clearly is that he offered to pay. But talking to my mother recently, she said that that didn't happen, that I was crazy, but it did happen. I think it happened that he offered to pay, but my mother refused the offer and paid it herself. So, yeah, she could pay, but for some reason, she just wanted that my father was the one who was supposed to pay. Now, I hope this is a lesson to single moms who have deadbeat baby daddies. Like I said in a previous video, I firmly believe that the moment you're a woman and you're pregnant, that child is yours. It doesn't matter whether you, your baby daddy or your husband is the president of a country, that child is yours because so much could happen. People die all the time. People leave like my father did. And what are you going to do if now your baby daddy or husband walks out on your life? What are you going to do? You have to raise that child. So this mentality that life stops whenever your baby daddy is a deadbeat, I really don't like that at all. I'm going to explain... <laughs> I don't want to go much deeper into my own experience as a single mom, but all I have to say is that I'm devoting my life to make sure that I'm giving my child the kind of life I can afford without putting her father in the mathematics, you know. So I never liked being put in a position where in a kakama ni mvrutano between your mother and father, you know. Because now it leaves you as a child feeling like Am I a burden to you, mother? Am I a burden? Because what? <laughs> well, is it that serious? Like, am I that much of a burden that you really, really want this man that you know very well is an alcoholic that is extremely irresponsible to have to do things, simple things, just because just because it's not your responsibility as a mother. I don't know. I oh. mm. 
I can't afford therapy, so listen. This is part four of mommy issues. Childhood done. Since I'm a smart ass, I passed my KCP exams. Duh. Now what happens next? High school. What's supposed to happen when you want to join high school? Money. Where is the money? Your father. <laughs> I don't really remember much about whether kulikuwa na yom vurutano between my father and her regarding how I was gonna go to high school. But something very very nice happened. I applied for a scholarship by Equity Bank, the Wings to Fly program, and I got in. You should note that after getting the scholarship, she never let me forget. Kwa sababu, she always said that if it wasn't for her applying for the scholarship or even knowing about the opportunity, I wouldn't have gone to high school. And I'm like, what do you mean? What? Now, I was called to a very prestigious high school. Should I say what it is? Because there's a story that's coming up next that's very very let me not disclose the high school that i went to now once you're sponsored by equity bank they do everything for you and when i say everything i mean everything they paid for my school fees they bought me uniforms they paid for my fare to go to school books what else shopping they used to give us shopping hampers that comprised of you know the basic soap uh, sanitary towels what is it called oil body oil inaitwa je mafuta kujipaka you know the basics yeah they even added sugar and blue band now when i say that the wings to fly program saved my ass they literally did can you imagine whenever you closed school you used to be given fare from like your school to wherever it is you're going whether you're going home or whether you're going wherever mind you they don't really know where you want to go okay so it's really up to you to say where you're going and how much you need for fare. It was pure bliss, my friends, pure bliss. There was a bank right outside the gate from my school. So I literally left the gate, cross the road, go to the bank, get money, and go wherever I need to go. So when I tell you that my parents did not pay a dime for my education, I really mean it. Nothing from pocket money to to fare, to school fees, to shopping, everything was provided for. Let me tell you a funny story that happened when I was enrolling in Form 1, yeah? So, obviously my father had the school I went to, so he showed up. My former classmates know what I'm talking about, yeah? So I was standing outside the hall with like my luggage, and then I see this man, he comes and says hi to me. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> It was my father, guys. Mind you, at that time, I hadn't seen my father since I was like, I don't know, six or seven years old. <laughs> you see that sort of, hey, how y'all doing? I'm like, okay, now this is awkward. So yeah, he came, said hi to me. You know, he'd brought me, you see this, what is it called? He'd brought me this medicine. It's called Seven Seas. Ile dawa kifua ya, cause obviously he knows I'm asthmatic ya. Yeah? I don't know, and you know the school I went to is very cold. I went to school in Nairobi, by the way. I think that's important to mention ya. Yeah? Oh, I didn't even mention ya. Yeah? I went to school in Nairobi, okay? All the way from Lamu to Nairobi. So when I talk about us being given fair to go back home, you can get what I'm talking about, okay? It was so awkward cause I'm like... I really don't know this man except from when I'm calling him to ask him to buy me a book or a pencil or whatever. So a few moments later my mother came and then they went away and then I don't know they went and argued or whatever they did and then my mother came back and then I never saw my father again until later. I'm going to tell you that later part. But yeah, that was that was a that was a weird thing to experience, you know. <laughs> Can't afford therapy. So listen, this is part five of mommy issues. Trigger warning, this part contains a disturbing topic, okay? Let me tell you about the first time I thought of attempting. I didn't actually do it, but I thought about it, okay? Now, this was in 2013, right before the election period. Now, here's the thing. You all remember what happened in Kenya during the 2009 elections? Was it 2009? Yeah, 2009 elections, yeah. 
So when the 2009 elections happened, see, I was at home, I was still young then. So we heard about every bad thing that happened up country. Wajua si si watu alamu, si watu apwani, tuasikia tu bara mwana. Tuashanga rada when the 2013 elections came, I was so scared of being in Nairobi. Cuz like, what? What if it happens again? So me and my mother had discussed the possibility of me going home during the midterm holiday. It was going to be like a long midterm ish. It wasn't like a full holiday. So we talked about it and decided that I was going to go home for the midterm holiday. Midterm comes and suddenly my mother doesn't want me to go home. She wants me to stay with her sister in Nairobi. She has a sister in Nairobi. And and you're going to hear a lot about her, okay? My aunt lives in Nairobi, okay? So she wanted me to stay at my aunt's place. I'm like, oh my god. I don't want to be in Nairobi during elections, Germany. I want to go home. I want to go home. I'm not ready to die. I'm very young. The funniest part is that in as much as I wanted to go home because of the elections, I also had a boyfriend. Okay? That was at home and I was so excited. <laughs> Don't judge me. I can see you're judging me. Don't judge me. So I was so excited that now it's midterm and I get to go home and see my little boyfriend, yeah? But somehow my mother knew about him, so she decided this speech I'm putting a stop to it, okay? So that's purely why she decided I wasn't going to go home and she even we even talked about it. She was asking me who is this boy, blah blah blah. I don't even know how she knew about it. I can't remember the story, but it was a weird story, okay? So she was like, who is this boy? And I know he's the only reason you want to come home so badly. There's nothing about elections. So you're going to stay in Nairobi. Where? Where? Sini lika sirika. Nikisikia siyo ni mbani. Ay, natoku na wazimu. But I was so pissed. Okay? So, I don't know. I cried a lot. And then, stupid me. I don't know. I just felt like that was the end for me i didn't want to continue with this life anymore cuz like at that point now that you know about now my background and my childhood and stuff my boyfriend and whatever relationship we had it was mostly just talking and you know the exchanging of letters and the being told i love you you know the stupid fun stuff yeah like used to make me feel so alive you know and i felt like he was the only source of joy in my life. So what do you mean I'm not seeing him and the way I was looking forward to it? So mimi mshenzi, mimi mshenzi, okay? Nikaenda sinilikuwa naishi, I was staying at my aunt's place, yeah. So I went to the shop that was like downstairs in the same building where my aunt stays, okay? I went to the shop. <laughs> I told the shopkeeper to give me a dawa ya panya. You know? So <laughs> Namsiulize ni tugonjwa wapi? Nilikuwa <laughs> naenda kutibu panya, namsiulize ni tugonjwa wapi? Anyway, so I told the shopkeeper at my aunt has said unipe dawa ya panya and then si akanipea. Obviously didn't have money so nikachukua na deni. And like in my head I was like I won't be here tomorrow. So ni ilipeni tu dawa zenu za pa za panya. So on that day my aunt had gone to work obviously. I didn't have the balls to go through with it. So I threw the whole damn thing away. But I forgot that nimechukua shirt na deni. So tell me why in the evening <laughs> in the evening when my aunt comes back, shopkeeper anamuliza, "Eh, atulitumana dawa ya panya iko wapi pesa?" My aunt is like, "Nilitumana dawa my friend." What are you lizard do apanya ni nini and then they figured out why I want to oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, have you ever been out of the cooking pot into the fire? Anyway, so it was a whole thing my mother blah blah blahing, my aunt blah blah blahing. So obviously my aunt was scared and angry, rightfully so cuz that was very stupid of me. I don't know, I wasn't going to do it. I don't I don't know. I can't really speak to my my mental state at the moment but i know it was just a very messy day for me when she said obviously there was no way she was going to continue 
having me stay in her house i was like okay because obviously you can't have a child come and do such dumb things in your house and then you're gonna be held responsible so what was the option my father because you see my father is in moranga and i'm in nairobi so my father got called come and pick up your bitch daughter so <laughs> He came and picked me up and took me to my grandmother's house, yeah, where he was staying, okay? So, that was now the beginning of now me learning about who my father is as a person and also me getting familiar with my father's side of the family, okay? I can't afford therapy, so listen. This is part six of mommy issues. <laughs> Let me tell you how many times I was visited when I was in high school. Okay, let me tell you. Yes, this is what happened. My mother lives in Lamu. And as you know, there is no money. So every time there is like an occasion or whatever, there is no fair for her to come visit or for her to come do anything that needs to be done at school. Which I mean, I understand. But honestly, given that, you're not paying for school fees, you're not paying for anything. Fair, mama, mama, nguja mini fair. Fair kuja kuvisit mutoto, utaki kutafuta. But nisa, nisa. I really, I don't know, I really did understand, okay? The only time my mother ever came to school was on that first day when enrolling me. And then in Form 1, as Wings to Fly Scholars, the foundation used to organize, uh, what are they called? conferences for us to attend like us that have been sponsored by equity bank so that first conference that was held when i was in form one my mother came and took me like to the conference because it was being held in where was it in kasarani okay and i'm in form one and obviously don't know how to get to kasarani by myself okay so that was the only time she came to school those two times yani okay from there Throughout the entire four years. So, remember, I told you I went to a very prestigious high school, okay? So, you can imagine, especially during opening days and closing days, everyone has been brought by their parents or has come to be picked by their parents. They have big cars, they've been brought for food, and all the lovely, yummy goodies. And you're just there. Kusababu kwenu ni lamu na hakuna fair. Yeah, so that was pretty much my life. We even had a squad of like those of us who were never visited. There was a parents' day or something like that. And you see, during parents' day, see parents come with food and everything, yeah? The school organized for those of us that weren't visited. They made like a special meal for us. And I don't know, we were like 12 of us <laughs> in the whole school. <laughs> So yeah, we were like 12 of us in the old school, so we went, ate the special food and, you know, you just move on with life. When I was in Form 4, there was another visiting day, but for this one, my father came with his sister, okay? So a brief background, my father has four siblings, yeah, so there are five of them, okay? So four girls and he's the only boy. My grandmother has raised them pretty much single-handedly because my grandfather died when the last born was very, very young. Like my grandmother raised all five children alone. They all went to school and they all made something out of themselves, except my father now. I can't afford therapy, so listen. This is part seven of mommy issues. Now, high school went very well, and then it was time for KCSC. And as you all know, finishing KCSC is a very important moment of your life, yeah? And given that my mother wasn't able to come to school for any functions throughout my four years of high school, we talked about the possibility of having her come pick me up on the day after KCSC, okay? Which is a very important day, because, like... All from fours are coming to be taken home by their parents, yeah. So I was really looking forward to like seeing her and you know all the like the the joy of like you're now done with school and your mom is here to pick you up and everything. Oh by the way, I finished high school in twenty fifteen. This is in class of twenty fifteen. <laughs> if you know you know. Is that why most of us are cast? So that was 2015 November. Now, about a week before KCP was over, my mom called the office at school to say that she wouldn't be able to come get me 
after KCSC and I was like, "Wow, Aki I was so heartbroken." Now she said, "You know why? Yeah? There's no money and everything and you know fair and stuff. So, instead of her coming, she was going to send my aunt." Now remember, I had not seen my aunt since the Dawapanya incident. First of all, I was embarrassed and I was ashamed and I just didn't feel comfortable going back to her house. So I told her, tell my aunt not to come, I'll find my own way home. Because remember, all I had to do was leave school, go to the bank, get fare and go home. Easy peasy, okay? Now, this is what happened. If I remember the dates right, November 4th or 3rd was my last exam and then on the following day there was going to be an exam for the geography students i think geography paper 2 when the majority of us finished the exam the school said that they want us to clear on that same day so like clear the textbooks and everything mind you that means that if you've lost any textbooks you have to go buy them right there and then bring them get cleared and then now you can go home i'd lost several textbooks from way back in form 2 a suitcase of mine got stolen in Nairobi mind you there was a whole lot of commotion cuz everyone is scrambling to clear there are so many parents in school like the school is crowded and everything yeah so i went to the bank cuz like where was i supposed to get money from so i went to the bank outside the gate and talked to the manager whoever was responsible for us scholars yeah and told them that i've lost a few books and i need to clear and stuff they asked me what are the books how much money do you need i was given money went and bought the books brought the books to school so by the time i was coming back to school it was around 5 pm okay mind you i'm alone everyone else has already finished like everyone that finished kcc on that day has already gone home Yeah so when I came back to school at around 5 to bring the books the principal said that I can't go home cuz like it's 5 p.m. I'm alone like they didn't feel comfortable releasing me at that time so they told me I have to stay in school and then I was going to leave the following day with the geography students can you imagine finishing school like you can imagine the whole four years of high school and how one is so excited to finish and then you can't go home because <laughs> and then everyone else goes home and you're left there so like on that night i remember i went like i even went to sleep earlier than everyone else cuz like i'm done with school yo so <laughs> i went to sleep and then i was so sad cuz like cuz now everyone thinks you're also waiting for the geography exam but no and then in the morning i got released to go home now here's the thing and this is very important to note as i was leaving whew, i met a teacher that was i think he was on teaching practice at that time he had taught in my school for a while he gave me his number and said that i should contact him because i don't know just so we can discuss things i don't know he just gave me his number okay remember this cuz it's very important yeah so yeah and i left now when i left did i have a phone i can't really remember the events that happened afterwards all i remember is i reconnected with my best friend grace okay so i even decided i wasn't going to go home i think did i have a phone i don't think i had a phone actually didn't have a phone i don't know where did i get a phone to call grace i have this best friend rather i've always had this best friend we knew each other back from home when we were in class 6 okay so we went to the same primary school we were classmates from class 6 and we've been friends ever since her name is grace and you'll hear a lot about her in the upcoming parts because i remember i called her and then we met up in town or something and then we went to her cousin's place so i even decided i'm not going home let me spend some time in Nero Nero because like nobody likes me at home what am i even going there to do anyway so yeah and i stayed in Nero for a while i can't afford therapy so listen this is part 8 of mommy issues now we're in november 2015 and i've told my mother i don't want to hear anything ekstaki kuambiwa kitu mimi you know cuz she refused to come get me from school remember i told you that equity bank used to give us fare to go home so when i was clearing and going to get the books they also gave me fare money to go home all the way to lamu so that was 2000 and something shillings or 3000 i can't remember so when i reconnected with my best friend 
we ate the money we ate the money and now i don't have fare to go back home so i had to stay in nairobi for a while until we figure something out remember the teacher that gave me his number at the gate while i was leaving yeah so i took the number and we started talking at that time i was 16 years old remember that so i don't even know what we were talking about or what we would possibly be talking about okay but somehow he convinced me that we should meet up for what i don't know but i think the proposal was a meet up along the lines of discussing the next foot forward like after kcsc now it's university what are you going to do you know to offer me career advice and stuff like that okay so me and my 16 year old naivety i took a bus and went to his place i'm trying not to cry now this is what happened yeah so i got to his place i don't think i don't know whether i want to tell the whole story on the internet but i got assaulted by the guy i don't know it's something i've always tried my best to forget and i i kind of just took the memories locked them in a box and threw the key away you know so yeah this is not something a lot of people know actually none of my family members know nobody knows except now a few friends i've met along the way that have felt comfortable sharing what my first sexual experience was like so yeah it was rape <laughs> oh yeah i just moved on with life and then he obviously told me the whole bullshit about please don't tell anyone because you know it's going to endanger my job i could get fired and i don't know why i listened because i should have reported i should have told someone but i didn't because i don't know i don't know on second thought let me just explain what happened because after this i don't want to talk about it again i went to his place i got to where he told me to alight at he came and got me we went to his house so yeah we were talking and everything and then around 4 p.m i decided yo it's time for me to go home and then it started raining yeah so when it started raining i obviously couldn't go when it was raining so like i stayed back a bit and then we continued talking and then at around seven the rain stopped yeah so now it's time for me to go home so he told me okay let's go i take you to the bus stop that person was living in kikuyu okay so from kikuyu to town now afterwards is when i realized that the bus stop he took me to there were no cars going to town that were coming so we just stood there at waiting for cars to come that are going to town and none of them were coming so he was there asking like pretending like ai kwani hakuna magari at if if now so ukukosekana gari itabidi you go sleep like itabidi we find somewhere for you to sleep because now what are we going to do and there are no cars going to town yeah so i don't know at that point i was a bit scared like i was scared because like my heart was beating so fast because it's night time i'm with a man what am i supposed to do mind you i've told you that i had a boyfriend back home but we hadn't gotten intimate yet obviously so i was still very new to this whole thing about having to interact with men especially at night and everything we stood at the bus stop for like an hour no buses to town were coming so so son of a bitch tells me that ati he has a sister that lives nearby so he was gonna take me to his sister's house to go and spend the night there and then in the morning he'd take me to the bus stop again so we can find a bus to town okay so on our way to his sister's place he stopped at a shop and bought something or whatever 
we stopped at some apartment and then he was making a call like he, he went up Okando to make a call and then he came back and told me that his sister is not at home he asked me now what do we do should we go to my house and wait for my sister to come so like <laughs> what do i do like i was like okay so at that point I don't even know what was going through my mind honestly but I really never expected that something like that could happen okay so I went back to his house we continued talking and everything and then around 9 p.m. 10 p.m. his sister is not back yet sister there was no sister so he tells me it looks like you're going to have to spend the night here so he used the classic line oh my god that's the first time I ever had that line of I'll sleep on the couch you sleep on the bed so me and my stupidity I went and got into <laughs> Tell me why 2 minutes later this <sighs> I don't even know <laughs> I don't even know <sighs> I don't even want to explain like in details but I cried a lot that night I cried and cried until I could <laughs> and I like couldn't cry anymore okay so the whole time he was just telling me if i stay calm it won't hurt as much so i said calm so the whole night afterwards i just cried in the morning in the morning i was obviously bleeding so he went out and got me pads like sanitary towels and then i went and showered and then he took me to town he took me to town and gave me 500 shillings now that was going to be fair for me to go back to where we were staying with my best friend okay now when we were on the bus is when he was telling me about how i shouldn't report him because he could get fired and everything and i was like okay and then two days later he called me Uh, telling me about how he has a girlfriend and everything and then he has the audacity he gave that girl whoever that lady was he gave her the phone to talk to me i don't even know what the point of that was but yeah he gave her the phone to talk to me and then the girl was just saying hi i hear you finished kcsc congratulations and like at that point i was so numb yeah I was so numb I didn't even know what to feel so I took the whole thing put it in a box in my brain and just forgot about it in as much as life is not a Nigerian movie I really hope that his day of punishment is coming and throughout the years I've always really hoped and prayed that he never did that to somebody else and I feel like <laughs> Part of the reason I chose to homeschool my daughter is because of the trauma. Yeah, that's how I lost my virginity, sadly. Well, I can't afford therapy, so listen. Now, after the whole thing of me getting assaulted by a former teacher, me and my best friend stayed in Nairobi for a while, and then we decided it was time to go home. Do we have money for fare? <laughs> the drama that happened for us to get home it was just crazy it's not really relevant to the plot but you just know that after i ate fair that equity bank provided i couldn't tell my mom that i don't have fair cuz she was she was obviously going to say that she doesn't have money either so me and my best friend figured out a way to get home and get home we did through methods of lying and deception and i feel like i should tell you this story so <laughs> okay grace and i left her cousin's house and went to nairobi town knowing very well we don't have fare to get to lamu luckily since both of us went to school in nairobi the the people at the bus station our to magariza kwenda kwetu they know us okay so there was one person in particular who like knew us very well so we went there and started crying telling him that, <laughs> that our money has been stolen <laughs> so the man felt so sorry for us and everything so he said he was going to figure out a way to help us all the buses had already left so 
the only buses that were in Nairobi at that time were shuttles that were going to Mombasa. There were no shuttles going all the way to Lamu. So the man decided he was going to pay for us fare to get to Mombasa. And off we went to Mombasa. My best friend had an aunt in Mombasa at that time. I think I had an aunt in Mombasa, yeah, but I didn't really want to involve her in any of my bullshit, okay? So I called a former classmate. I know, I called her and I'm like, hi girl, I'm in Mombasa, where are you? <laughs> so she was like, oh my god. She came and took me from like the bus station. She took me to her house and then lovely people, lovely family. Her aunt was very kind and everything. So I tell them that I came to Mombasa with my best friend. We've booked a bus to Lamu tomorrow morning, okay? So I just need a place to sleep for the night and then in the morning I'm going home. Cool, cool. Okay, so we spent the night. It was fun to like reconnect, talk about high school experiences and stuff. So morning comes and the aunt is like, okay, so what bus did you book? I'm like, first of all, we haven't booked any bus. Because <laughs> we don't have money. So I tell her a particular bus, okay? I just picked a random bus and told her this is the one we've booked. Okay, so I got ready. She told me she was going to take me to the bus station. And she did. She took me. And then when we got there, she told me, at now go take your ticket to those people so they can confirm and everything that the bus is coming and everything. Me, I went, like, I went inside. I left outside. I went inside. And then I went and, like, asked. Because I had to talk to the guy, yeah? Because she was outside watching. So I went and asked the guy, whether kuna magari za kuenda lamu, okay? So the guy said yes, and then he was explaining, and then I said okay. So when I left to go outside and meet my 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 classmates aunt, I told her yes, we've confirmed, and the bus is coming. So she was like, okay, now my work here is done, so I'm gonna leave you to wait for the bus, okay? Okay. Mind you, there is no fare, there is no ticket, there is no bus. Mind you, I have to get on this bus today. Because if I don't, where am I going to go? Luckily, the bus wasn't full. Because even when I asked the guy, he explained that there were still several seats remaining. So I was confident that Ibase Jaja. The bus came. And as people were boarding, I stood in line very confidently that this is where I belong. So as I was entering, there's this guy who usually checks the receipts. So the guy asked me, where is your receipt? I tell him, I have a friend of mine waiting to board the bus at another bus stop, Ukombele. I told him that my friend that we are going to pick on the way is the one who has the receipts <laughs> for me and her. Okay, just so he could allow me to get into that bus because there was no way I was staying in Mombasa. Where was I going to go next? So he agreed. I went and sat very confidently. This whole time my best friend and I were talking and like, planning and this is the best plan we could come up with go to where we were supposed to pick her up and she gets in gets comfortable sits down next to me because remember the bus had empty seats luckily the conductor wasn't very eager to like come and check the receipts at that time so by the time he was coming to check to look at usha and ayenda like we are now past mombasa town so to look at kwa msitu msitu and look at usha pita mtuapa like to look at mbele mbele you know so, now there's no way you're going to tell us to shuka the bus. We are two vulnerable girls fresh from high school. I'm going to ambia to shuke. Luckily, the guy that I told that my best friend is the one with the tickets is not the same guy that is the conductor. Time came for the conductor to check the tickets for everybody in the bus, okay? So he started checking, checking. Actually, we were seated at the back, kabisa uko nyuma nyuma. So when he got to us, we were just looking at each other. He's asking us, where are the tickets? And we told him, <laughs> we told him that our mother, now we pretended to be sisters. Our mother, <laughs> our mother is waiting for us in Lamu and she's the one who has the money to pay. <laughs> Wait until we get there and then she's going to pay. Now, the conductor called the office in Lamu to ask at Oh, was there an arrangement? There are two girls here that, like, are saying that their mom is in Lamu and she's the one who's going to pay. But then, there's no way they're going to tell us to get off the bus, like, 
Tell me where you get to Lamu and my mother is waiting. Because obviously I told her that I was coming home. Sisi kwanza tukambeo tusimame hapo kando. Kwa sababu we haven't paid. We stood there and then my mom is like, why are we not going home? <laughs> like, it was chaos. When I tell you it was pure chaos, it was chaotic. So now I had to explain to my mother that I ate fair. So what ended up happening is we gave our two phones to... <laughs> They took our phones, guys, but now we had phones and they took them. They are not very expensive phones, but they decided that they had to, like, get their money one way or another. So they decided to take our phones and my mother agreed because, like, we need to get punished. But all in all, are we home or are we not home? That's the story of how me and my best friend traveled from Nairobi to Lamu for free. So follow me for more travel tips. <laughs> I can't afford therapy, so listen. This is part 10 of mommy issues. Now, after our phones were confiscated, we went home. And I thought that since I've already finished high school, and now we are waiting for the results to come out and everything, I thought that for once, I was going to get a little bit more freedom, yeah? Because if you remember from previous parts, growing up, I was never allowed to like be a child, go and play with my friends, hang out with my friends because I was expected to do household chores and everything. So that included the cooking, the cleaning, and even at times I had to do laundry for my brother, which is fine. I mean, that's what kids do, especially in African homes. Now, since I'm grown, I felt I deserved a little bit more freedom, but no. Now, one thing my mom always said, rather her policy always was that I was supposed to like do all my chores and finish and then go out and play which makes sense but i've already told you that i'm a procrastinator and there's no way i'm eager to be productive just because you're telling me so so like any other teenager i rebelled which is to be expected yeah now here's the thing i had a lot of demons that i was fighting at the time so i did a lot of bad things and crazy enough my mother didn't have any idea about half of it yeah so all she was concerned about was that i was either i don't know doing the dishes late or cooking late so by the time she comes home from work food is still cooking so she's asking where have i been all day because like she expects that by the time she comes food is ready now looking back i feel like i was being treated like the wife in the relationship which i don't know i'm not saying that wives are the ones supposed to be cooking and cleaning but like, I feel like as kids, our responsibility to do chores is supposed to be as a learning opportunity, not an obligation or like something you have to do. You get my point. Because even nowadays with Aria, sometimes I am seated here and I don't feel like getting up to do something. And she's busy doing her own things. Maybe she's watching something or she's, I don't know, coloring something. And then, of course, since I'm the mom and... I have authority over her, apparently. I just tell her, Aria, go and get something for me. And obviously, she's busy doing something of her own, you know. So, in such situations, why can't you as a parent just get up and do the damn thing yourself? Why do you expect that your child is the one that's supposed to do all these things just because you gave birth to them and you've sacrificed your whole life to raise them? So, it's the obligation. Anyway, I'm ranting. But at that time was when I started getting exposed to drugs and alcohol, you know, because like, yeah, that's what people my age are doing, yeah? So I'm not going to lie, I tried a few things just to see what it's like, okay? And also, since, you know, people tell you that these are things you do so you can forget your trouble, so I smoked a few joints here and there, I drunk a little bit here and there which is crazy because nowadays i don't do any of that i'm not a drinker at all i don't like going to parties i don't like noise but at the time i was just doing it for the plot and maybe just to see what it's like i tried it i didn't like it and so i moved on from it i remember one particular day i went to hang out with a couple of friends i'd made yeah my best friend wasn't involved in this okay we stayed out till late we did all those things there. So when I got home, and they brought me home, and one of them was someone that my mom knew, yeah? Brought me home at like 8 p.m., yeah? And then obviously my mom is like, ah, you've brought her? Okay, okay, okay. The moment they left, I was, where, 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 
ushaifinywa i know funny thing is at that time i was high as fuck so i didn't really feel the pain in the moment yeah so she just did her thing and then in the morning when i wake up my whole body is sore like certain parts of my body zimefurafura too because she was beating me up with you see this chain for locking bicycles that's usually metal and then it has a plastic coating so like whatever the the nini landed you could see like a whole line of i'm swollen i i woke up in so much pain i'm like ai kwani jana kuliendaje and then <laughs> so that was one such instance and the instance i remember is i had this neighbor we had this neighbor rather like right next to our house yeah he was just a young guy like, obviously we were friendly because he could give me movies and then he was he was an alcoholic <laughs> so he used to come back at night and play very loud music to disrupt the whole neighborhood but the songs were bomb as fuck cuz used to play dance hall music and i really love dance hall music to date it was so fun i always looked forward to him coming back home cuz i know it's going to be a party tonight yeah <laughs> one time me and the guy were just talking but it wasn't anything bad yeah so we left now as we were leaving another nosy snitchy neighbor called my mother and told her oh yeah your daughter has just left with this particular person so come home quickly So we went we were just talking you know we just we just went on a very very innocent walk okay where tell me why when you were coming back my mother and my grandmother i.e. my mother's mom were waiting for us at the gate <laughs> my friend they almost beat up the guy cuz like they were like oh you're walking with a with a with an underage girl what are you doing with an underage girl and the guy is trying to tell them like nothing no even me I was trying to tell them like we weren't doing anything we were just walking cuz like anyway you i mean now that i'm grown and now that i'm a parent i understand how the whole thing was looking yeah but like yeah that happened and i obviously got beat up like i'm a fucking snake so i continued having fun all through december january but in february something very crazy happened that i'll tell you in the next part that made even my grandmother question my mother's sanity